Typically, I am not a fan of recommending trappy openings or specifically solutions that are supposed to give you like a very crazy result in sort of a short period of time. That just sounds very scammy unless you buy my chess courses, of course. But besides that, if I had to pick an opening that is giving you crazy winning positions in less than 10 moves, I cannot think of something different other than the Vienna opening. So, in today's video, the video will be divided into, I would say, three major themes. How you can outplay your opponents uh, and literally make 1400s drop like flies by playing the Vienna against knight f6. We're gonna look onto the Vienna gambit. Against knight to c6, a very common recurring theme is uh, when they just go for the copycat. And uh, white is getting a very nice advantage after the move queen to g4 breaking the symmetry and also a mistake that I see over and over again which is perhaps not something that many people talk about which is the move c6 just trying to play into the center where white is supposed to take over the initiative by going for d4 for that and uh, many more make sure to watch uh, all the games that we are about to play I'm going to be explaining my thinking process as an international master facing lower rated players highlighting uh, their common mistakes and uh, explaining my thinking process. So please feel free to use the timestamps from the description, big what you need, and let's get started. All right, everybody, getting another white game, going to be opening up with e4. And the I'm playing e5, going to be sticking with our beloved uh, Vienna opening. And we already do get to see a bit of a sideline, which is 3d6. Can definitely start with d3 and f4 both are very reasonable i think i'll just play d3 since no need to gambit upon although it was perfectly okay idea is to play f4 knight f3 queen check should not be a problem because there is g3 of course it just ends up being a bit of a waste uh, of a move uh wondering if we're supposed to play uh yeah knight f3 i think it's a good move if he goes bishop g4 this may end up being pretty, pretty nice. Hopefully he's going to slide. He's going to take though, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to be like, oh no, my queen. Oh no, he can take my queen. Oh, he didn't. Man, that's so bad. We had one time to get in the Legos checkmate. I've actually never had Legos checkmate in real life. But we do wait on F7. <laughs> I don't know what this game was about, but point is, if he takes my queen, that is leading to a pretty well-known pattern. So that is just made on the board and here why it's important that you know your classics. So, uh, of course, he's just down opponent having a losing position, critical mistake, h6, and also leaving the check is not really any useful for him so with that being said i think we can really move on to the following game all right everybody getting another white game gonna be going for e4 and against e5 we're gonna be sticking with yours favorite the vienna opening and uh, when they do the queen's knight we like to start with the bishop if they uh, start by developing their king's knight we like f4 because after it takes there is e5 and this is very uncomfortable for them to deal with just gonna be sticking with this move we do get to see the copycat which is actually something that is super common for this rating range however the good news is that the copycat is bad because of queen g4 move specifically and now i expect g6 or queen f6 to get played king f8 is a line but yeah kind of rare so there we go g6 Important to know that on queen f6, which is attacking the f2 square, we simply ignore that by going knight e5, which uh, yeah, was already shown uh, on the channel in the past. So make sure to check out the e4 rating climb playlist uh, if you haven't already. And against g6, we begin with queen f3. So there was a pretty concrete threat of him playing d5, which would pretty much end the game on the spot. So you don't want to see that. And uh, he plays knight f6 in case of queen f6. So uh, we like to force the endgame with knight e5. Much better endgame for white. 
However, on this move, it's important to start with knight e2. Main point is that we stop him from playing knight e4 because we can just exchange. And our play is pretty simple, going d3, waiting for d6, which is a huge blunder. And actually, it even gets played because the opponent will not have an easy way to defend against the spin. So, as simple as that, we just get a completely winning position. Very basic stuff. He just followed like the normal path, but this is simply leading to a uh, losing position for my opponent because we have simple move to just uh, collect the knight. Extra piece endgame on bishop takes. Important to take back with the knight, so not allowing any, any card play. And yeah. I think we actually have a pretty cute idea to end the game quickly because... You know, it's like an end game. I always say trade all the pieces, play it slow. But for this specific position, I was about to just play h4, h5, honestly. <laughs> he just resigned, couldn't wait for it. Trying to do that. He cannot take with the f1 because of the pin. So we'll have to take this way. Just to show you this idea, how powerful it could have potentially been. You can just take, and then we have uh, checkmate on h8. So we do warm up with a very effortless win. He was supposed to play something different, not like d6 in this position, but um, yeah. Anyways, uh, this is just a blunder. Pretty sure this is uh, already mentioned in the Vienna course. And uh, yeah, he's supposed to do everything but that and get a sort of interesting game. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everyone, getting another white game. Gonna be going e4, and uh, we're just hoping that we get another e5 so we can play a Vienna. And long time, no knight f6, no Vienna gambit. So this is gonna be fun. And oh boy, 1350 blitz still making this ultra common mistake. So 1350 blitz equals, uh, yeah, at 300 more points equivalent for rapid. So this is still very common mistake for this rating range. They're kind of only reasonable moves to play d5 in this position. Somewhat inferior, but I guess playable d6. e4, e5. Knight has no good square to retreat. And uh, no, cannot go to h5. You bozo. That is going to be hanging. So queen e7, just unpinning. Same issue remains. And as you can see, opponent just fought, okay. There is this typical mistake that happens in lower rated players' mind. They go queen e7 pin, and they just think that the e5 pawn somehow will remain pinned for the rest of the game, kind of no matter what. But no, I just play queen to you, dude. Watch out for my moves. What are you doing? d6, give me the free knight. Thank you. So, so proven that uh, thanking for free pieces increases your rating range by 50%. So... He's gonna do that, hop immediately, playing aggressive, extra piece, just very easy, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> do the Vienna, it is the way to go, I'm telling you, so, with that being said, I think you can move on to the following game. Alright everybody, getting another white game, gonna be trying out E4, and uh, we do get to face E5, gonna be looking forward to... Get a Vienna, and uh, apparently we do get a pretty spicy sideline, which uh, is kind of like a reversed uh, King's Gambit, if you think about it, but you already know King's Gambit is losing in the first place, so imagine how bad can it be while being down the tempo, so. Uh, jokes aside, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is pretty terrible for my uh, opponent, because, uh, well... Doesn't have like a, an obvious thing to do with his knight currently, and no, he cannot go knight h5. You bozo, that would be hanging. Queen just captures. So only alternative is yeah, back to <laughs> where it came from. So uh, yeah, we're making sure the knight uh, doesn't have a good home. So now he's kind of living uh, with his parents again. What are we going to play? That is the more interesting question. I mean, the check cannot be terrible. 
problem for him is g6 we just capture and king f8 um, i think we just keep developing with tempo threatening mate in one so he needs to kind of defend expecting maybe queen e8 offering queen trade which uh, yeah i think we might accept queen e7 however inviting a tempo move allowing knight e5 yeah, I think queen e7 was a mistake because uh, no matter what he does, we're going to go knight c7, play the discovery. I think that's already crashing. So I'm super glad that uh, we get to show how we can refute the f5 move. I mean, this is also mentioned in the course as well, of course, that being bad. And uh, yeah, knight e5, just um, getting ready to collect and... Uh, more than happy to enter the end game now because we're gonna have an extra rook compared to the previous version. He goes for the sneaky bishop takes on f2. Interesting. So I think this is a very instructive moment because I feel like a lot of you may be just okay, he takes. I need to recap. Well, recapturing is probably very viable and decent option. But you should also consider moves like, okay, what if I don't recapture? So here I think it just makes sense to capture the bishop because on queen c5 check we have knight back. Not only defending the bishop but reinforcing checkmating threat. So I'm gonna take this way. Once again queen f7 so meaning he has to go back home. He managed to save the rook but he is still down a full piece. So this is uh, definitely not the best opening outcome for my opponent. I mean at least he's... Unless he's from Ohio, so. Uh, ready to play knight f3 on the next move. Maybe even sacrifice the knight using the deflection. Hopefully we can get a checkmate on uh, on e5. I mean, checkmate on f7 after sacrificing there. Has to do knight d7 to stop that. It's very difficult for him to play. Like, these pieces are completely stuck. And look at my pawns. <laughs> These pawns are like the real MVP. So he plays knight d7, finds the move. However, kind of doubt that it's going to be enough to save. I'm considering f6 pawn takes knight f5. However, he does get a bit of kind of play with queen c5. So, okay. I think just opening up the position makes a whole lot of sense when uh, his king is still kind of caught in the middle. So going to play d4. If ED we take with a knight, idea is to infiltrate. If, uh, yeah, move like E4 happens, I can just go knight E5, which I think we're going to end up playing. Could have also played F6, knight uh, F5, but I just like getting these like three connected pawns that I cannot touch. Notice queen E5 is not a move because of queen F7. And man, I may be getting ready to play F6 next, and this queen is like getting really overwhelmed. Uh, yeah, H6. Just gonna go f6. This is not a threat because rook is hanging, threatening to take that. We check as well, by the way. Only move now, queen d7, but maybe still continue with e6. So, uh, yeah, just gonna be recapturing this way. At this point, I feel like he just has to give up the knight because um, queen e8 may lose, may be losing even more material after these simple takes. And then we have. Uh, this cute little f7 move. It's picking up everything. Uh, yeah. Take on g8. Take with a bishop. Up like a rook and uh, minor piece. Gonna activate. Play rook g1. Take with a bishop. Game should be supposed to just win itself now. Uh, but there is something dangerous to say. Whenever you say it, it normally won't. We managed to find the fork. So, uh, winning another piece and also managed to force resignation. All right, everybody, getting another white game. Gonna be trying out the uh, Vienna in case they go for e5. Let's see. Okay, we do get to face e5. Gonna be going for knight c3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6. We do go for the pawn push, which is the Vienna gambit. But. If they play the move c6, always indicator, you want to go for d4. Typical mistake for this rating range, we already faced this in the past, so make sure to check out the e4 rating climb playlist because I am taking a fresh account from like 
700 and uh, gonna be getting it to at least 2000 uh, with the same openings. Vienna is white, Caro with black. Um, feel free to let the opening suggestions in the comments if you wanna see anything specific in the future. For now, I'm just focusing on uh, developing in aggressive fashion while opponents not really doing a whole lot, to be honest. Considering e5, just gonna play e5. Was uh, a bit afraid of knight h5, but his knight will be misplaced for the rest of the game. I can go back and maybe trap it. Knight e5, however, seems to be losing a pawn. Taking and hitting the rook. He does play knight c6. Considering bishop c4, threatening mate in one, but then he castles. So perhaps I will stick with something more long term, like knight f3. I think maybe bishop would be better on this diagonal. Uh, we do need to consider that. Perhaps it's not about trying to get an attack and just about putting pressure on the knight because in case of bishop b7 that uh, drops the pawn on d7 since the rook is giving me so much pressure. And I think already he has a dead lost position so easily winning against the 1500 by playing the normal Vienna, punish his mistake, play c6, you wanna go for d4. That is the standard way of doing it. Now in case of rook b8, you guys have to find uh, what white is supposed to play in order to win because we have two very tempting continuations. So I think one of them is uh, to play e6 maybe. Other one being uh, simply rook b8, rook b7. Pick up the knight, two pieces. But this is far easier. Opening up path for the bishop in case he moves the rook. This guy will hang. And I honestly think this is just uh, enough to secure the win. He probably just didn't notice my threat and I will just, uh, yeah, try to take as much as we can from here. Gotta go on IG5. <laughs> when you see a good move, look for a better threatening mate. Has to play bishop or knight e7, not to get checkmated brutally. All right, let's see if he's gonna find it. Can't really add much on that. G6 just allows a uh, checkmate, so. Oh boy, this checkmate was more violent than Mike Tyson in his prime, really. This was just absolutely brutal, so. Yeah. Critical mistake of the game, playing c6. He didn't lost only because of this, but additional mistake b6. Not like developing with d6, bishop e7, castle. That would have been better. The rest is easiest. Uh, I mean, <laughs> not easiest, but easy. <laughs> and uh, castle g4. That was also not helping for him. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everyone, getting another white game. Gonna be trying out e4. And I think we're getting another Vienna. Let's see what opponent has in mind. Expecting either knight to be developed. Against this one, we're gonna be going for the bishop. Against king's knight, we like the move f4. Going for the Vienna gambit. Main reason is that the knight won't have uh, a safe uh, home. So, uh, against knight f6, just playing d3. Now he has bishop c5, bishop b4 as main moves. Knight a5 also to be mentioned. He plays h6, which is kind of like a common beginner mistake for this rating range. He just has kind of nightmares with bishop g5, knight d5 happening, so he does that. But as a Vienna player, you don't really care. We're going to get in uh, f4, knight f3 with very good pressure on the center anyway. So we we'll just do our normal play and just get like a nice, pretty juicy tempo. Bishop to b4. I'm actually not super familiar with this specific move like instinct says knight f3 however knight e2 also could be interesting just getting over uh, the knight being uh, over protected in case of like d5 ed5 knight e5 we could just castle i'm wondering you know like we just need to figure out whether knight f3 d5 is any annoying like ed5 knight takes um that's a little, little annoying, just gonna go knight e2. Like, typically once you play f4, you just go knight f3, but uh, against this, kind of weird uh, combination, h6, bishop, b4. 
Intuition says it's just a little bit uh, safer to play uh, this way, so that's what we're gonna do. I mean, the kind of overall plans remain the same. He does play d5, which... Yeah, it's kind of a good indicator that knight e2 was the right move, because now we can easily castle while everything is nicely covered. Bishop c5, knight e3 may look tempting, but I think he's just losing a lot of time after bishop takes, and perhaps if he, I don't know, I just feel like we have a very good position there. Maybe just um, knight e5 could be a move. I don't know. Expecting them to also maybe take or take with a bishop. Uh, black has many moves. Typically, you just take with a pawn, hitting the bishop against check. The normal move is just to slide back, and uh, we get kind of a typical pawn structure for the Vienna, where he is very likely to take, and we're going to be taking back with a knight. He slides back with the bishop, which uh, is a bit slow, like it's kind of tempting me to go fe. But then after 95, I don't see like an obvious way to take advantage of this. As candidate moves, king h1 is always nice. Knight g3 is also pretty typical. I think I'm going to start with knight g3. Oh, knight g3 is actually a blunder. What am I saying? <laughs> knight g3 is a typical idea, but not when bishop a5 gets played. Another actually very interesting move. Now, I actually remember uh, the main idea. Whenever they do bishop a5... You can go bishop a3 and uh, that's actually a very powerful move because it's simply keeping the enemy king stuck in the center. We have a typical idea almost like exactly like this in the Vienna course. It's just that it's a bit of a different position because h6 is not theoretical. But I do recall seeing this motif. So keep his king in the middle and he should be in uh, quite a lot of trouble. Now, question is, what is the best way of doing this? I think we start rook b1, just, uh, I don't mind if he takes on c3 plus. We have rook b7 ideas, sometimes the rook could come into the game like this. It's another very standard, typical idea for the variation. Yeah, I think that's what we do, rook b1, expect him to play rook b8 or some nonsense, and then we play h3. Bishop takes queen, takes bishop c3. Fe should just be very good for us with bishop takes on f7 being flattened. So um, I think white is getting very good dynamics, but the key idea is bishop a3. Yes, check, just uh, sidestep. Still, he is in, in a bit of trouble. Like maybe queen d7 will be tried. Preparing long castle. I mean, what else can he do? Oh, he can try queen h4. Why not? Queen h4, I guess, sure. Uh, all right, that doesn't really have much of a threat. Problem with f e is that he can just take and defend f7, so we're not like winning on the spot yet. Mm. I'm wondering what's the best way to create pressure. I would really love to sacrifice the bishop. Then go Fe, but I don't really see like a direct way of really converting this. Perhaps it's interesting just to sacrifice, you know, like uh, the positional way. Not having an obvious win, but just because his king is going to be weak and we get a massive center. Okay, I'm going to go for this idea. I kind of doubt that it's uh, very good, but... I want to show it for the boys. What a girl still. <laughs> that was 1%. Very much appreciated. So. Going to be taking and then I want to play d4. Saying that his king is a bit weak. While uh, these pieces are stuck. He has a hard time saving his king. Because castling is not a move after the king has moved. So. Um, yeah. We do get two pawns at the end of the day. So, not doing that bad uh, material-wise. And if I could get in queen d3, queen g6, that's just uh, winning the game. Next goal is to unpin, so maybe we can move the knight. Maybe, therefore, it makes sense for him to try out queen h5, putting pressure on the knight. However, we have an easy defend with rook f2. Or we can perhaps even look for 
some cheeky ways to play. Yeah, he doesn't uh, go for the concrete move. I think he should have. After queen d3, I feel like my position is becoming way easier to play. Queen h5 was a bit problematic there. I should have played rook f2 and I guess positions maybe slightly better for black or around equal objectively. You'll have to wait for the post-game analysis to see like a clear evaluation. But uh, yeah, now I feel pretty okay about this just because he has a hard time uh, coordinating his pieces. He's up a piece, but the piece is not really that important. Like I've got this massive center. The bishop is completely locked off the game. My bishop is very active. So, um, yeah. I think we should be Gucci. Now, I think white has a very powerful double attack. Like threatening this and hitting the pawn. So, 96 pretty. Dubious move. Also, queen c4. Interesting idea. Queen e6 and queen f7. Maybe queen c4 is even stronger. Normally I would go queen f3 because it just wins a pawn, so that's easier. But uh, queen f7, I have to admit, it's a pretty huge rat. Okay, I'm gonna stick with simple. Notice that I cannot play uh, rook f8 since my bishop is razor sharp. Ready to take that rook. And uh, yeah, cannot castle. Which is funny, some people will say, okay, black and cast along, <laughs> they're all good, much better, that's not a move, remember the king did move a little bit earlier in the game, that was kind of the whole concept of sacrificing, so um, yeah, rook f8, he simply forgets about the bishop, of course, if he would have gone like rook b8, uh, yeah, he just resigns, <laughs> rook f8 shows resignation, yeah, in this po at this point he just completely lost, I'm curious though, I'm pretty sure computer hates, the way I uh, sacrificed. Yeah, rook b1, decent move. Queen h4, then bishop takes on f7. So if you look at the evaluation, it says it's like minus one, which, you know, I kind of expect. Okay, so I played d4 and I told you this position is maybe like very slightly better, close to equal if he plays queen h5, because I have to play passive with defend. So I was kind of right on the eval, which is, hey, surprising given for me. And after he makes the mistake 97, we unpin with queen d3. White is already much better despite being down a piece. So, yeah, he's up a piece, but the piece is completely useless. Queen f3 plus 5 position, simply resignable. So, yeah. The learning from this is basically if you feel like, uh, well, you have two pawns for the piece, you have a strong center, you're restricting opponent's pieces, then... That may very well be interesting. I mean, it's kind of hard to be worse since opponent cannot really make any threats. So, yeah. Main learning of the game. Remember, against bishop a5 lines in this sort of structure, bishop a3 is the key move, which is just uh, keeping the king in the middle. So, after that, you're better in many ways. Arguably, h3 would have been a little bit better. Kind of fail to see what's the point of bishop c3. But I guess just playing down a pawn, we are very active and white should still be better. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. Alright, everybody, getting another white game. Gonna be trying out e4 and hoping we do get to practice uh, another Vienna. And against the Queen's Knight, gonna begin with the bishop. And uh, yeah, even against people that are around 1500 almost. Looks like they still uh, go for the copycat quite frequently, which allows us to break the symmetry, of course, going for queen g4. This is by far the best move and uh, how white is supposed to be getting a better position. Now, after g6 is being played, the d5 becomes a threat, so you want to watch out for that. And uh, we sidestep while gaining a tempo, attacking on uh, f7. Now... My opponent may be ready to jump uh, with the annoying knight on d4, hitting both the queen and the c2 square. So in order uh, not to let anything annoying happen, we'll begin with this. And then want to go d3. One of the main ideas in this position, whenever he gets like the knight on f6, by the way, queen f6 is another kind of playable move, but white is much better after knight d5. As explained in the course, of course, 
d6, just going d3, bishop g4 is not really a problem, we can slide back, and typical mistake here is something like castling, allowing bishop g5, and uh, black is facing this deadly pin. So on bishop g3, we don't really have many moves, queen g3, only square avail available, wow, that was a hard word to pronounce, you should try, <laughs> available. Queen g3 is the only move that we have against bishop to g4. So far, you can easily reach this position, I would say. Um, I believe we already had uh, something similar before. But this time opponent goes back, making it a little bit more interesting. Now, the first instinct for me would be to play bishop g5. Because if we get queen h4, that's kind of just resignable for black. Because he has no way of defending the pin knight. But on bishop g5, we need to figure out, okay, what is up with h6? Are we going to be able to keep up that pin? That is a little bit of a trickier question. However, I think h6 is not stopping our main idea. So this is really beautiful. You should definitely go ahead and try to pause the video. Find the best move for writing that position. Because I feel like on h6, never mind he didn't play, but on h6, we had the same queen h4. Putting pressure on the knight and he cannot take because the rook would have been hanging. So, in case you found that, hey, congrats, you're definitely getting better. Who would have thought that watching countless videos from my channel instead of doing puzzles will help you improve your chess? At least, somewhat. So, knight h5 hitting the queen, gotta react against that. Uh, there is also the option of entering the endgame. Knight h3 and then take with a pawn. You will be having uh, to take back. Yeah, endgame is maybe tiny bit better thanks to the open h file, but definitely I think we should go a little bit more ambitious here. How is this gonna go? Like if I play queen h4, he's gonna do queen d7 most likely. Do I have any way of uh, like maybe going g4? That just loses a pawn. I don't know why would you do that. Um, yeah, difficult to say. All right, I think we need to focus and come up with a good move, which is um, <laughs> not something that you need to do all the time to in order to win these type of games, but uh, definitely interesting when it happens. I feel like have to keep just by elimination. I don't see any better options. We'll speed up a bit because this is five minutes flat, so no increment. Gonna do queen d7, that's for sure. And I mean, he still cannot really castle after, can he? We can try to make the argument that this is perhaps the reason why it could be slightly better. Queen d7, maybe we're just gonna take and go g4. That's like the straightforward path. Is he gonna give uh, give up on the pawn by playing knight f4? If so, I'm just gonna grab it. We'll see how that uh, will play out. If he goes passive with knight g7, well, bishop to f6 is a pretty juicy square for that bishop. I mean, just look at it. When you play a move like bishop f6, it's just like uh, you enter the pool in a very hot day. Definitely very revealing. Plus, you can also <laughs> pee without using the bathroom. So, anyways, if in case you're doing that, there is definitely something wrong with you, so you should... Really stop unless it's your own pool, so I have nothing against that. Fine, not gonna argue with it. <laughs> and against f6. Yeah, I think just go for the small tactic, winning a pawn, knight takes, take with a bishop. Queen takes, can trade, pick up that bishop. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit of a Kappa Blanca kind of tactic. I didn't ask you to post the video because I didn't have that much time. But okay, opponent resigns. Why did he resign? Like, there are... This is kind of like a category of chess players that just resign way too early. Like, also happens in over-the-board chess. Like, you're just staying there thinking for like half an hour how to beat the guy. You make a move, it's still a situation is like very unclear. And he just, you know, respectfully resigns. Because if you keep playing on in like a losing position, it's sort of considered a little bit disrespected uh, amongst the masters. So there are some masters out there, just, okay, I resign, and you're like, w why did this guy resign? K kind of similar here, like, <laughs> you probably had to spend another extra hour to figure out why he resigned. Uh, but, um, well, he was definitely about to lose a pawn, 
computer gives a slight compensation for black. I don't know why. I, mean, I guess it's just because opposite colored bishop and uh, he's got like a little bit of uh, pressure. I was clearly better nonetheless. Uh, I think we played this perfectly, by the way. Queen h4 was best decision there. f6, sketchy move. You're supposed to do queen d7. Uh, yeah, I don't know if what I was about to do was good. Yeah, he was supposed to take this way. Okay. In my mind, I saw queen e6 and I thought g4 has to be the move. He goes like knight back, bishop f6. I thought this is, you know, here it's like we're entering the f6 pool and it's just so nice. It's more of like a jacuzzi at this point, really. Just, just look at that bishop. But uh, yeah, as usual, uh, not all of my calculation turns out to be very precise in the end, but we do manage to win a pawn and... Uh, also get the aspect for resignation. So with that being said, I think we can really move on to the following game. All right, everyone getting another white game. Gonna be trying out another Vienna in case they're going e5. And uh, we're facing someone that's almost 1500, plays bishop c5 on move second. I think here we can already start with f4. I can also play bishop c4, trying to get into the copycat. Uh, yeah, I think best move is f4, however. I think this is what we recommend in the course. Just play knight f3 after and, uh, yeah, carry on with life. Hmm, he takes. d4 is interesting. It allows check. So, uh, yeah, I think it's just slightly better. Start with knight f3. Is he gonna go g5? Like, playing some sort of, let's keep the pawn kind of fashion. He just goes back. He may be willing to do this, however, because d5... I don't think it's unlikely that he plays um, g5. g5, however, we have a typical uh, strong idea, I think, h4. Oh, he was willing to check me. I uh, <laughs> I was not expecting him to check. I was just uh, putting uh, bishop e7 into kind of goofy moves categories. So I thought I was just doing nothing. He wanted to check me. Okay, this is interesting. I mean, I could play g3, pawn takes bishop g2, takes and king f1. I don't really like that, however, I feel like my king is on a weird place. I mean, my king is going to end up ultimately being in a weird place. It's just that, uh, yeah, we need to do it in a better way, if that makes sense. Just going to do king e2, and the idea is to go bishop f4. By the way, allowing this check is quite a typical theme in the king's gambit, so it's not like I blundered something huge. I have definitely a lot of assets to, like... Uh, compensate for it like development and center when g5 happens that's a mistake just take and king is kind of bone clouding oh, just for the time being okay this is like the good bone cloud that's like the best bone cloud you could ever hope for so uh, king is able to like safely hide like this finish development uh queen f6 hitting bishop and pawn let's retreat and defend if knight c6, I think bishop b5 is making sense. Pinning rook f1 and pinning the knight. But also to bishop c4 with rook f1 idea, winning f7. Probably gonna do that. Knight h6, do I need to worry about anything coming on g4 to play h3? I think not really, that would be a bit slow. So just gonna do this move. Knight g4 is mistake because of rook f1. And his position is just completely ruined. There is just a disaster at this point. King will no longer have safety. It's basically it's just like a homeless king now. As much as it hurts me to say, it doesn't hurt me because it's my opponent. And I really want to make him miserable. But yeah, queen h5. How is this guy ever gonna get castled and get a decent life? He's not. I'm telling you. Queen g6 hitting the pawn. Uh, maybe just queen f3. Simply covering the pawn and attacking f7. We'll also play rook f1, kind of gambiting the pawn. That's also not uh, completely crazy. I think both are reasonable. I'm going to start rook f1, just kind of uh, making knight g4 less appealing because of bishop f7. Perhaps he's going to go ahead and play bishop e6. Yeah, against this, I don't mind. Like, it's not really a pawn that uh, we really need. And... Uh, Queen f3 is now a move. I wonder if the weird queen h1 is a move. <laughs> Just for you guys. 
I'm gonna play it. <laughs> it's like one of the silliest moves that I've played in a while, but it may be actually making some sense. He's preparing Rook G1 and his Queen is almost trapped. So I find that to be a pretty unique and beautiful idea. And just look, beauty of playing a Gambit. I've got literally all of my pieces developed, Pawn Center. I mean, <laughs> Pawn Center and look at him. King in the middle. I'm completely ahead in development. Queen h5, rook g5 traps the queen officially. So, what's not to like about white, white's position? What? King on d2? Do you feel like the king on d2 is a weakness? No, it's not. It's like, king is chilling. It's like one of the safest kings that I've ever seen. And now his only move would be like bishop g4 to block the idea. But we have h3, picking up the pin piece. So, um. Uh, this is a typical idea that you guys should be looking for if you're below 1,000. Pinned pieces, you win it by going for the pawn push. So, uh, yeah. Let's see what he, is he going to go for. Just spending a little bit of time now probably <laughs> feels like a little bit uh, strange about the way we coordinated our pieces. So don't make the mistake of taking because that takes with checks, so it's actually not working in case you're thinking, oh, I find like a second brilliant win in the position that he didn't see. No, it's, I miss a lot of things, but uh, <laughs> not that, not here. So just ready to collect my free piece and then, uh, you know, the drill, just gonna try to exchange all the pieces. Really nothing special, I would say. Yeah, I just take. He's gonna be taking with the knight, and once again we can try to go for some pinning. Yeah, see no reason why not to. Knight f6 would just take, so he has literally like uh, no way to unpin. So we managed to win another three piece. We can say, I mean, best is knight e3, knight c4. At least he wins like two pieces for that. Tries f5 out of like. Desperation, just gonna take. Rook takes, that's not quite working. The ratio of defenders is way in our favor. Takes, we can just recap, but can throw in this move, making sure he's paralyzed for the rest of the game. King e7, we also have mate. Maybe there is actually like force mate that I'm missing, but uh, yeah, just gonna keep it simple. It's like literally no moves. Look at those pieces. It's like move 23. Our king is about to, yeah, just explode right now. It's so active. <laughs> and that does allow the checkmate. So for those of you that are wondering, king e2, white is still much better. Okay, plus zero three while we're down a pawn. I'm wondering uh, if bishop c4 was better. No, d4 is like best move. See, I told you, it's like, Typical concept to allow this check and uh, King D2 is just the worst move because you have a hard time coordinating afterwards. So it's important that you play King E2 because you have threat of Bishop takes on F4. That's actually like the main idea to why King E2 is better against the check. And then G5 critical mistake, like he's of course supposed to just go back and allow Bishop F4 play normal game. But after G5, uh, I'm just winning strategically because he's got through in structure, got Bishop pair and strong center. So, uh, white is much better. The only move that I'm kind of curious about is whether queen h1 made any sense. Queen h1 actually fourth move in strength. So, not that bad. Okay, queen h1, I feel okay about playing it. It's like one of the funniest moves that, uh, that I've played in a while. So, with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. Getting another white game. Gonna be opening up with e4 and hoping we get to face e5 so we can uh, get to play another little Vienna. And opponent playing d6. This is already getting uh, interesting since they are playing a pretty interesting sideline to say the least. Now, when c6 gets played, this is definitely the signal that we can play d4 and take back with the queen as. There will no longer be knight c6 ideas. However, I feel like I'm just gonna be playing it a bit slower this time. You may be wondering, okay, what is this guy doing with a3? Uh, aren't you supposed to develop pieces in the opening? Well, point with a3 is that with c6, 
should be definitely going after my bishop like that, so we'll need that move sooner or later. So a3 is just a prophylactic move to have bishop a2 in case of b5. So please, calm the fuck down. Gonna be going d3. And... Ooh, f5. That is something that I didn't really quite expect. I was just uh, probably gonna follow up with f4, knight f3, just going for slow play. If f5... Yeah, that like leaves a pretty tempting option to go greedy and uh, cash in the pawn. I wonder if, uh, yeah, we can uh, play something instead of that, but I, I don't really quite see it. Else, you may get like a pretty comfortable position with knight f6, d5, so we may have to call him out on that. Yeah, just gonna go bishop g8. This is a theme that, by the way, could happen with colors reverse. The difference is that we're winning as white when that happens. Taking the pawn. It's not like a winning pawn yet, but uh, hey, it is a little bit of something. So, uh, yeah, I usually like to make that uh, comparison. Better to be down a pawn. I mean, <laughs> I completely... Uh, ruined that analogy, but I was about to say uh, it's better to be up a pawn and losing than be losing with equal material. So, <laughs> you know, there's always uh, something that we need in order to be optimistic. So we'll take anything. I'm not saying we're worse here with a pawn or anything, but yeah, if there was no other way of getting something clear to play for, I'll definitely grab the pawn any day of the week. Um, yeah, just gonna force the end game now with the extra pawn. I think um, time to just keep it very simple. Now we have a choice, I think, between two main moves. That is castle long and castle short. Castling short won't really make such a lot of sense since we need the king closer to the middle in the end games. But if I castle, maybe he can play c5, stop me from playing d4. So for this reason, I'm gonna open it up right away with d4. Um, yeah, trades are obviously favoring us because we're the better developed side since these pieces are like really stuck. Finds a good move with d5. Gonna go aggressive, knight c5. Getting both, expecting e4. When e4 gets played, Probably gonna go like 95, simply just uh, activating my pieces, trying to utilize their maximum potential. Uh, not like uh, it happened with my uh, chess career. On king to d6. Can definitely trade. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, deal upon. Go back with the knight. Attack the bishop one more time. He fails to spot that it was under attack. So we <laughs> go for the pretty sneaky capture. Leaving his king butt naked. No pieces. Okay, gonna go for the checks. And uh, yeah, looking for a... Oh, oh my god. This is gonna be so beautiful. Oh my. It's almost like a castling mate. Almost. Can we make it like it's a castling mate? These? Am I asking for too much? No, I can't really. I wish we could like castle check maybe, but... Yeah, actually King D2, it's gonna be pawn checkmate. That's like best, so he doesn't get to run away. <laughs> but yeah, okay. We catch the king in the center and we mate him. Uh, critical mistake for this game. F5, I think just losing a pawn. It's true, he does get decent comp. Yeah, I'm only like tiny bit better, apparently, according to the engine, but like King D7. In what kind of universe is King D7 a good move here? Maybe you just saw my previous Cairo Cam video, which, by the way, you should check out because, spoiler alert, I played King D7, but it was in a more uh, interesting position. So... Clearly didn't watch that, just for the record. Uh, yeah, and then once we have the end game, 
I feel like D4 is really precise here. Maybe it doesn't really matter. Yeah, knight c5 was quite okay, and then we're just like uh, much better with an extra pawn. So nothing much really. Uh, yeah, this is like kind of a cute way to deal with the sideline. If you're like really looking forward to punish it, as I was saying, like d4 is very interesting when uh, c6 gets played as uh, we already did in the past. So uh, yeah, with that being said, I think we can really move on to the following game. Getting another white game. Opponent instantly plays e5, so maybe this is an England Gambit player, we'll never find out. But he seems to be mirroring us for a bit. Yeah, just full mirror guy. Hello, queen g4. This is the key move to punish the mirror, and d5 is simply not working. It's like, yes, double attack, hitting both queen and bishop. Typical idea that you need to constantly be watching out for in this structure, but... Hey, there's a bigger fish on h8, so we're just going after that. I don't really know what opponent's plan is. He's just trying to play fast moves, I guess, and somewhat bamboozle me, which uh, will generally work most of the times. But hey, we're up like a full rook. Just gonna go king d1. Literally the only way to protect the city upon. Bishop g4 check is not an issue because queen covers that, and okay. We got an extra rook from the opening move 8. Let's see what, uh, yeah, opponent has to say about that. Um, we'll try to finish development in this somewhat awkward position. Now, because of this pin specifically, I mean, I meant this pin. White well, is a pretty cute way of uh, developing. So, you can try to go ahead and pause the video, find it. Uh, may not really work so well against this, but in the previous position I was considering b3 bishop a3 as a way to put pressure and develop against this move first thing that comes to mind is g3 however he may be looking to check me or something like his idea is queen f2 so maybe just keep it simple bring queen back home over queen trade expecting him to go queen h5 check where i'm just gonna play f3 and claim that uh, i'm up a free rook with no compensation it's up to opponent to yeah, do anything about that, or he may do nothing about it and resign. <laughs> that is also an option. So, checks me, just f3. Ready to do 92 on the very next move. Um, yeah, he's probably going to go bishop e6 long castle, which is uh, happening right now. We don't really mind. I'm just going to go h4, because once we... Getting queen g5, getting rid of the queens, that's game over. He's literally going to resign after queen g5. It's just how powerful this strategy of uh, trading queens when you're up so much with heal. Just force his resignation, so expect it to really happen. May play on for like a hundred more moves. That's also always viable, but uh, I think this move is just kind of like a clear indicator that we're not looking forward to allow any kind of play. So at this point, <laughs> Queen G5 is, you know, this kind of a move. Like you long castle, it's like you go out uh, with the boys and then your wife is just calling. Like, what are you up to? When are you coming home? Blah, blah, blah. Which is this, this Queen G5 move, just like spoiling all the fun. Look, opponent just, he, he doesn't want to answer the phone. He doesn't know what to do. He just finally accepts his fate and takes. But for how long will he be able to resist this uh, mental degradation? We're just about to find out. By the way, this is a threat. Okay, Free pawn, we like these. Free pawns are like free beers. I just came up with that one. Not sure if that's the case. I don't, uh, I don't really like beer or any alcoholic drinks. I don't uh, <laughs> recommend you either, but hey, I'm fine. As long as you don't wake up your neighbors during the night, I'm fine with that. Um. <laughs> um. Looking for a take, maybe play like knight e2. Could play d3, open up the bishop, it's a bit of a pawn sacrifice. Just gonna play b3. Idea take and then do d3. Just very simple stuff. Maybe also playing that move next, just sort of finishing development. So, uh, yeah. I don't really know what opponent is hoping for. 
because he didn't show any aggressive intentions whatsoever, but maybe he just likes to lose. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Ready to take back uh, with the rook. Takes, we have knight that covers it. By the way, pawn was uh, free on the previous move. I forgot about it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Gonna recapture, he needs to watch out for this constantly as well. Rook is about to infiltrate. Rook h7 next, uh, supporting the pawn so we can uh, advance, making some progress. May try king d7, I guess, king e6, but not gonna resist for long. I'll give you that. Okay. May go rook d2. Counter-attack. <laughs> I'm afraid we might queen in the process, so I don't really care about it. He could go rook g2, that would be like a funny, interesting try. I would do that if I was him, definitely. Yeah, he finds it, good find, but uh, not enough at this point when he's down so much. Oh, he's going for the cheeky idea. That's creative, okay? We'll give him that. That's pretty creative. Let's start with rook g7, forcing rook h2, I guess, and then uh, maybe just rook g1. Case of rook h7, we have rook g8 and exchange his rook. Knight f3, we don't care, just push. Yeah. Push and baby. You can have d2 or the rook. We're about to get a new queen. So, that is a little better. Rook D, Rook G8, we're not like promoting, we're trading his Rook first. That's a nice little detail on the conversion. Don't let him take your queen, just get rid of it and then get a full queen. So, uh, uh, yeah, managed to win. He blundered quite early on in the game, D5 was a decisive mistake. Uh, yeah, allows Queen G7 and... Uh, Queen f6 is like a little bit of a better move to like kind of survive, but uh, well, I mean, still. White is up two pawns. I don't really think he has much compensation in this structure, so d5 is just a pretty dubious uh, move there that you need to be aware of. You have queen g7, and uh, it is uh, going to be way better. So uh, with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody, getting another white game, this time facing somebody that's rated around 1300, playing e5, allowing us to go for our beloved Vienna opening. And uh, we do get to face another knight f6, Vienna gambit time, only move for them d5. Another very typical mistake, they just think we're kind of like messing around playing king's gambit so they can take and get a winning position. I'm telling you, that is not the case, my friend. Just queen e2, defending, and I has to go back home. Will he find it? That's the only move not to lose a piece. Because knight h5 we take, d5 covered by the knight, nothing else really works. So knight g8, knight f3, this is still like uh, covered in the course, like d6, d4. Uh, important to play knight f3, by the way. d4, a typical mistake, allowing queen h4 check, so... Want to get rid of that first, and on d6, just play d4. Um, yeah, I think taking with a pawn is appropriate. However, I've got to be honest, I don't remember these things move by move, because at this point, it's just uh, uh, position is losing for my opponent. Uh, oh, d4 was a mistake. Yeah, I had better, by the way. d4 was a mistake on my end. Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh... <laughs> Take that back, I forgot about uh, this trap that we have. So point is you can go knight d5, so I'm still gonna go for it now. I could have done it previous move, but um, now I just uh, remember. He could do bishop takes on f3, which is kind of annoying. Because if I go queen takes, we'll no longer have the discovery, so I'll try pawn takes. He has queen h4 only move, but then king d1. And I'm still claiming that he has very hard time defending against c7, so gonna do exactly that only move not to resign queen h4 which yeah he fails to spot and watch out for this boys it's gonna be beautiful white has a winning move so the obvious ed6 is good but hell no going in for the fork 
Going in pretty hard and point is Queen takes allows a very beautiful discovery. It is just gonna be the best discovery of all time. So how to win in 10 moves with a Vienna opening? Slash Gambit. Here it is. He does not take the knight because he was uh, afraid of the discovery. Which seems fair, but uh, yeah. Position still remains completely winning. Take it with the queen, how do we get a cap? Think this way, just hitting the knight. Probably will get to c96. I pick up another pawn on f4. Okay, queen e7. Um, yeah, I don't mind queen trade being up a full rook. So just uh, gonna continue development. Hitting the knight. And taking free knight. Up rook and knight. So far. Your bishop h3. Let's say restricting his king somewhat. Expecting knight c6. We'll check him. Then cast along, probably. Tough position for opponent. <laughs> I should have perhaps gone bishop takes on a7. It would have been like slightly better. But I just really want to finish development and uh, don't care about those pieces too much. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna grab now. Bishop before we have c3, not a problem. Easy defend against the check. Probably he'll play bishop d6. Bishop d6, knight b6, trying to exchange his power for knight. Maybe looking forward to play knight f4. That's like a little annoying. Maybe bishop d6, I'll start uh, by playing bishop c5, just uh, for the trade. He could be checking, but also consider like long castle, whatever he does. I mean, at this point, every move is like completely winning. It's just a matter of, uh, yeah, not getting uh, bamboozled somehow. I just get a castle, seems fair. King e7, whatever, we can check. Oh, sorry, I meant here. Still... We don't have an easy checkmate yet. Okay, he does that move. Taking the bishop, pretty big threat. I can check king e7, rook e1, king f7. Don't have like a direct win, so I'm gonna start with bishop f5. If g6, probably just retreat to e4. Intending uh, rook e1 next move with bishop b6, huge threat. That would be almost checkmate because he can only block with a bishop. And uh, yeah. This is definitely like an easy win since <laughs> basically move eight. Actually, it was move seven if uh, I was paying attention to what was happening on the board. But uh, yeah, if you decide to pick up this opening, this is a disclaimer. You'll have to know how to convert positions where you're up a million pieces. If that is something that you're not comfortable with yet, uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing with your chess life, but uh, you should be getting comfortable. I mean, come on, just have to trade all the pieces. Game wins itself, so it's exactly what we're aiming for here. Trading knights, trading his bishop hopefully soon. Sidestepping the check. And, uh, yeah. Push him, baby. At some point, you just need to push. Like, you all had that gym, bro. Some point is just about uh, push day. Okay. Blundering my bishop is not ideal, especially when shooting an educational video, but I'm just going to go bishop c8. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're just exchanging, okay? We did not blunder. We're just trading pieces. Sticking to the strat. Oh, free rook. Take that. Okay, opponent literally has one bishop left, so he finds the resign button. Yeah, basically a decisive mistake. Taking on f4. He is much worse after. Even worse is when he plays queen e7, because, uh, yeah, you can go knight d5 right away. Right away. I've literally pre-moved. I played d4 in, like, uh, a blink there, only a second. I accept my mistake, so see guys, everybody can make mistakes. It's important to 
accept the fact that you are making mistakes and try to improve. So next time I'm facing queen e7, I'm going to be more eager to play knight e5 because it's clearly a trap that's also mentioned in the course, but I just uh, play the natural d4, like we're having a much better position anyway, so I just kind of like, let's say maybe we can put it in the category of like acceptance, like I was accepting that I am much better and I didn't really like fully concentrate, but you should always seek for the best move. So with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. All right, everybody getting another white game and we're going to be going for another e4 game and against e5 we're gonna be sticking with your favorite vienna opening just keeping it very simple against bishop before we don't really care just gonna go out play the bishop move this is clearly a sideline typically i would expect you to face uh, either one of the knights developed on the second move yes bishop before however we'll just keep it simple uh, try to get the transposition, playing knight e2 just uh, so we can recapture with the with the pawn gonna castle. So like uh, c6 still have d4 option, and then uh, on knight c6 we play d3. That's pretty simple. Yeah, c6 that's what he plays. So maybe he wants some d5 ideas. Whenever this gets played, d4 is typically the best move because. We can retake uh, with a queen and then we'll be no longer knight c6 idea, which will be winning a tempo by attacking our queen. So definitely critical detail uh, whenever something like this happens. Also, you cannot push d5 because we just take. And the thing with this c5 move, it's like you're kind of happy in, you know, like the first second. It's you just uh, take the opportunity to send a text to your crash for the first time. But like... A uh, few minutes after you do that, you realize you're never going to get an answer. So that's the problem with C5. It's like interesting for one move, but then you're just depressed for the rest of the game. Because now you just have a backward pawn on D7 that you will have a hard time defending. So just going to finish development, going to bring Rook open the open file. And then basically we can simply just win the game because we have that weak pawn, which we can attack for the rest of the game. and. Uh, yeah, just, um, pretty simple stuff, uh, rook e8, kind of weakening f7, so sometimes this can be a motive, I don't really see it working now, so just gonna bring uh, rook into the game, let's see what he wants to do, it is just gonna be pretty difficult to... Develop the light squared bishop. I would be maybe expecting a6 so he can play b5. But still shouldn't be solving his problems. Queen to e7. Looking forward to take. But it's not really working, is it? I have like two ways of dealing with this. Bishop g5 pinning. Or what I believe can be even more annoying. Just bishop d6. Forcing queen d8. No other squares available for his poor queen. And then maybe just go ahead and play the casual f4 e5 and just expand with the pawn. z5 in the first place has knight e5, so uh, yeah, pawn would be undefended. Let's just prepare it. If bishop takes e3, this is actually quite interesting because, uh, yeah, I would love to take with the pawn and stop him from jumping with the knight, but he will be able to take my e4 pawn. So on bishop c3, I think we're forced to take back with the knight. But knight d4 is actually not as annoying as i thought initially because there is simply pawn on c5 that remains undefended. He plays knight d4. Uh, there is nothing wrong with taking, taking on b4, just up a pawn. However, I want to keep the position close, which may be even more annoying for my opponent to deal with. I'm just going to go uh, e5 and... Doesn't have an easy way to retreat, I think. I mean, at this point, we can really keep it simple and take, but I, I just want to go e5. And the thing with this e5 move is that uh, we're trying to apply as much pressure as we can. We just don't want to, you know, it's such a nice position, win a pawn and carry on with our life. At this point, we can, let's say, be a little bit more ambitious. So, uh, yeah, just taking a pawn will really not be uh, a good deal for us here. 
it's simply the way uh, it works and yeah we managed to like really misplace his knight that is definitely on the positive side for us uh that makes the previous line even stronger now if we want to go for that uh there could be a cute tactic involving bishop f7 queen h7 that we should keep an eye on definitely not the best now i think but also move this knight just saying his bishop will remain out of the game i think i'm just gonna stick with that it's simplest also knight d5 perhaps i'm gonna stick with knight d5 i want to do that just because <laughs> imagine we could literally trap his queen that's kind of a funny picture isn't it maybe i perhaps allow the bit of b5 ideas yeah, I don't think this should be a problem. It just, when we have such a good position, it's hard to believe moves like b5 uh, will do much. Still, by the way, we're not trapping the queen with bishop c7 because of queen h4, but we are very close. And knight e2 just gonna go for recap. Simple move, hitting the knight. Uh, yeah, placed queen to h4, defending, but uh, yeah. At the very least, there is a fork. You win a rook. I mean, that should be good enough. There is g3 as well. Winning his knight. Pretty much. I mean, there is still queen h3, but... I don't think he can hang on for long uh, in this particular fashion. Also, there is knight b4 idea and then bishop f7. Queen c4. Rook e6. And we don't have f5 because queen drops. Oh, that's a pity. Would have been a funny line. Maybe I actually want to do that from the other move order. It's like a bit unnecessary, but pretty beautiful. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've got like so many tempting options. Just gonna go with g3. If he sacks... So be it, take or queen g2, take queen, extra piece in the end game. Has to play queen h3. And there we go. And now, now it really starts to be interesting. We don't need to make it interesting. That's also true. Just gonna go for the fork. <laughs> Let's not overcomplicate things for no reason. It's like. We're gonna win a rook, his bishop's out of the game, his knight is on h5. Like, literally, he doesn't have a single decently placed piece this whole game. So, at this point, you can do whatever. I decided to keep it simple. I could have gone for more, like, flashy tactics, maybe, but I think it's not required. And uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, yeah, not complicating things if not needed so i recommend you do the same um yeah i should uh yeah do as i say not as i do most of the times but the opponent just resigns because we could have literally captured both rooks get a winning possession so critical mistake for this game playing c5 i told you that's like Looks good, but not really. His position is already much worse. Like, first mistake was going c6. Like, he's supposed to do something like knight c6, d3, d6. But then after bishop g5, still white is getting very interesting ideas. I'm gonna play uh, knight d5 on the very next move, no matter what. And on h6, we take with knight d5. So, I really like uh, white in this structure. Key move, bishop g5 to get advantage. The way he played it, just allows d4. And uh, after, I think white is much better with natural development as we did and uh, already you can see it's even material but we have a plus four advantage according to the computer simply because it feels like my opponent is playing down a rook and the bishop so with that being said i think we can really move on to the following game 